In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure Artifactory in Jenkins. Has this ever happened to you? When you first started with your team, all you had to do was build your application and then deploy that application directly to a server. But now, you're being asked to store your application assets in a central location so they can be scanned and verified before deployment. In this video, we're going to look at one way to do that using Jenkins and Artifactory. Here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.3. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. I've also installed the Docker pipeline plugin as well. To this controller, I have an agent connected, and I also have a local instance of Artifactory running. And finally, there's a sample repository that we're going to be using that you can have access to to do this yourself. Down in the description is a link to a gist that has links to all of the documentation and the commands that we're running in this video. So here is the application that we're using today. It's hosted at GitHub under my account, Darren Pope, and the name of the repository is java-web-app. Notice that we are on the Artifactory branch. There are multiple branches within this repository, but today we're using the Artifactory branch. This is a very simple Spring Boot application, but that really doesn't matter. We just needed an application, and you'll be able to take this concept and apply it to your situation. Let's take a look at the Jenkins file. And we can see here in the Jenkins file, we have a handful of commands that we may not be familiar with. This is the complete Jenkins file that we are going to be using today. So what we will be doing is we'll be working from this Jenkins file and then building out the parts that we need within both Artifactory and within Jenkins. To start with, we have two environment variables, one that's CI equals true. This is going to be used with the JFrog CLI. We'll get to that in just a minute. We're going to need an access token to be able to integrate from the JFrog CLI back to Artifactory. The very first stage, we're just going to do a mavenw clean install. So that way, the jar file that's produced is what's going to be pushed to Artifactory. And finally, we have a stage where we're uploading to Artifactory. We're using the JFrog CLI official image, and we're going to do a JFrog RT upload. The URL of the Artifactory server is this. We have an access token that we've defined as a credential. Then we're saying this is the source file that will be uploaded to Artifactory. And finally, this is going to be the destination within Artifactory where the source file will be uploaded. Now, based on the Jenkins file, you might be saying to yourself, Darren, you're already using Maven, so why didn't you just go ahead and use Maven Deploy to go ahead and upload the artifact from Jenkins to Artifactory? Well, I could have, but I wanted to show you the JFrog CLI because you might be in a situation in the future to where you're not able to use a tool such as Maven or Gradle or NPM that has the built-in support to be able to upload to Artifactory. By understanding how the JFrog CLI works, this is just another tool in your toolkit. So let's take a quick look at the JFrog CLI. And if you're trying to track down where the JFrog CLI is at, obviously you can go Google it, but you can just go to jfrog.com slash get CLI. And it will show you a number of different ways that you can obtain the CLI. You can get it through an RPM if you're on Linux, Homebrew if you're on a Mac, Debian, there's an apt install, even just through curl. But as you saw in the Jenkins file, we're just using a container image to run our JFrog CLI. We happen to choose the slim version. We did not use the full version. Now, since we already had our container image defined within our Jenkins file, Let's assume that we understand, okay, we've got the CLI, but what do we do with it? Well, we can take a look at the documentation, and the link to all of this documentation will be in the gist. We can take a look at the usage, and we can see here that it's a basic JFrog target. We'll look at target in a moment. Command name, some global options, some command options, and then arguments. Very straightforward way of calling a CLI. Now, let's take a look at target. We could target either RT for Artifactory, XR for X-Ray, DS for Distribution, or MC for Mission Control. Now, in our example today, we are integrating with Artifactory, so our command, as we already saw over in our Jenkins file, is JFrog RT. 
So keep this in mind. So we're interacting with Artifactory. And then we have the command name. Now the command that we're going to be using today in the Jenkins file is upload. So jfrog rt artifactory upload. And then we have some parameters. Now we have the global parameters, URL, and access token. Those two parameters are completely specific to the global scope. But once we get down to target slash demo 001 snapshot, this is the source of what's being uploaded. And this is the target where that upload is going to land within Artifactory. So if we take another quick look here, we can see that, okay, JFrog, RT, upload, the global options, which are also defined within this environment, a little bit further down. So we can look at access token. And we can see, if we go further down, URL. So these are the global variables for that CLI. Now, one more thing that you may have noticed here is CI equals true. We put that in our Jenkins file. So if we go back to the top of our Jenkins file and look in the environment variable section, again, there we go. Then the environment CI equals true. Well, this environment variable being set, it just disables interactive prompts and the progress bar. So we don't need that because we're within our CI environment within Jenkins. So we set that to true. Now, finally, let's take a look at what the options for upload are. I've already explained them, but here's where we upload files. The command name is upload. We could shorten it with a U. And there are a lot of options. Now, in our example today, we don't have any of those options specified because I'm keeping it simple for the moment. But there are ways to do recursive or regular expressions. You can even do a dry run or symlinks. Lots of different options to take a look at here. And if you go to the bottom after all the options, you'll see a handful of different examples that you could try out. So basically, the example that we're following is this example one. Very simple, straightforward, jfrog rtu, which is upload. Remember, we had a dash dash URL and we had a dash dash access dash token. But then we get into our source and then we get into our target. So now that we've reviewed the documentation, let's go do our setup first within Artifactory. Now this Artifactory instance that I have right now is a completely fresh and clean instance. I don't have any packages defined. I don't have any artifacts here. These are all out of the box just from a very clean install. So first thing that we're going to want to do is flip over to our administration section I'm going to go to repositories, and then I am going to create a new repository. It's going to be a local repository. And I'm going to name this the same as my repository within GitHub, just to keep it a one for one. Now I could choose different versions. And this version of Artifactory is the open source version or Artifactory OSS. So there's only a handful of different package types that you can use. But for what we're going to be doing today, I'm just going to select a generic. The repository key, I'm going to give it the name of Java Web App. And I'm going to click on Save and Finish. I'm not doing anything else extra today. So now we have two repositories. By default, the example repo local already existed. I wanted to go ahead and create a generic Java Web App. So this now exists within our Artifactory instance. Now, the second thing that we need to do within Artifactory is we need to create an access token. So the way we do that, we're still under administration. I'm going to click on identity and access and then click on access tokens. And from here, I'm going to click on generate admin token. I'm going to allow all and it's set to never expire. Just taking all the defaults as it stands right now. Click on generate. And now we have an access token that is that long. So I'm going to take this access token and put it over in my notes because I don't want to lose it. Okay, so I've copied that. It all looks good over in my notes. So let's go ahead and close this. So we have a access token. So we have an access token that's ready to go. Now we need to go over into Jenkins and create a secret text credential. So let's go into Jenkins, manage Jenkins, Manage Credentials, we are going to create a new secret text, 
So secret text. The secret is going to be the value of that access token that we just created. So it's going to look very long because it is very long. The ID that I'm using is going to be named artifactory-access-token. Same for the description. Where did I get this? Let's go back to our Jenkins file. That is the ID that I pass into the credential helper. So let's go ahead and click on OK. So now we have our secret text and we are ready to go. So now that we have our credential set up, let's go create our job so we can run our Jenkins file. So we'll click on new item. We'll name this artifactory, select pipeline. Let's go down here to pipeline from SCM, change our SCM to git. Let's go grab our URL. There we go. Let's change our branch to artifactory. And our script path is Jenkins file. That's correct. Click on save. And then click on build now. Let's watch what happens here. We're doing our Maven clean install right now, running our tests. And now we're doing our upload to Artifactory. And we can see here from the output that the status is success with a total of one. So let's go check it out over inside of Artifactory. So we'll go over to Artifactory. Let's go back over to the application side. We'll expand Artifactory. We'll click on Artifacts. And we can see here that we have Java Web App. We expand that. We see Target. And then finally, we see demo-0.0.1-snapshot.jar. So why should you use a binary repository like Artifactory? Let's think about the purpose of a binary repository. A binary repository is the definitive source for binaries. What does that mean? It means that the repository is authoritative and has all of the files necessary for whatever it is that you're needing to do, whether it's building another application or deploying an application. That way, if we have multiple environments that need the exact same binary, our build system only needs to build that artifact once. As I said before, a binary repository can also be used to manage dependencies. Using a binary repository allows us to declare and potentially enforce dependency management policies across our organization. And finally, having a binary repository is really important as we consider our software supply chain. In order to stay in compliance, we need to be able to control and trust all of the software that is running within our environment. A binary repository is a tool that allows us to keep all software assets managed, not just the software that we write. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.